yesterday. Yeah, I think it was it was pretty emotional uh, for me because mostly of what happened, you know, in the previous year, even the last two years, but really the last year was very. Uh, you know, trying time, and, and so I was really confident going in, and I kind of thought that it's going to be completely rectified. Uh, you know, everything they had gone through. So, um, not that I, you know, I didn't have a bad day. Um, they they had very good days, and, and I came back strong and stuff. But um, still, didn't you know? It, top three is what matters in the Olympic trials, and so uh, you know, it wasn't there. So. Like going into the race, like I don't think anyone questioned your fitness, but I thought a lot. I saw a lot of comment about that maybe it was going to be nutrition that would be undoing for you in the race. Yeah. Uh, maybe part of the reason we're here is because of Gatorade and they yeah. did some more. Can you tell me a little bit about what you did with nutrition? Yeah, and and yesterday really it didn't have anything to do with nutrition because I I mean I was able to really um, hold it together. Um, I I did have some spasming in my hamstrings you know I've, I've had cramping before like you know in Beijing every almost every other marathon but it's definitely there's been some full body stuff you know like I could you could feel it in your hands my you know your neck and stuff like that this is really like this is muscular from I mean Ryan took it out at such an intense pace that um and I didn't run for six months this year either so um you know, I was able to back off to, but from we were running, uh, you know, 450 to five minute miles, I was able to back off to five minute miles for a few miles, or sorry, 510 a mile. And, uh, you know, I was able to, to kind of get that spasm under control. And then I, I was able to come back actually a little bit in the last couple of miles. And so, um, you know, fortunately, you know, the stuff that I did with the GSSI and Gatorade, I mean, it, it worked. I mean, it, it was good. I, I had great energy the whole way. And so, um, I think for me it's more of a matter of the training now. You know, I, I've, you know, I've, I've learned, you know, to get the fuel, the fuel and the fluids down. Now I just gotta, you know, it's just, for me it's staying healthy, and uh, and I think that's that's the biggest part. I stay healthy, and uh, I'll get I'll get rid of that that spasming and stuff like that. I'll be able to handle that intense pace going out fast. Yep. With like, I guess 24 hours to think of it. You've been able to kind of put it more in perspective. I mean, you mentioned not running for six months, whereas after the race, it seemed like yeah. you know, you're questioning your future in the marathon. And yeah, and and you know, part of that, you know, is I was so disappointed afterwards, and you know, seeing Alberto right afterwards, and knowing how well the training had gone. Um, that's why. That's I think that was the initial reaction. Was I mean, the training went so good. How could this have happened? And uh, but you know, looking back at it and and evaluating, you know how I was able to come back, you know, really, really even four months ago, I didn't know if I'd be able to, to do the, this, the Olympic trials just because you know, I was still hooked up to the wound back and all that stuff. And, um, I didn't really get into the real big, you know, decent training until the end of October. And so to be able to look back at it and I never, I never would have, uh, thought that, that I wouldn't make it be with the training that I had done, but the guys ran so well yesterday and it was such a, you know, I, I ran pretty good yesterday after 24 hours of thinking about it. I ran pretty good. It just, you know, it was it was not enough. And so that tells you a lot about the where American distance running is too, to to be able to run. Yeah, I mean, we had four guys run our two, 210, and, and uh, you know, I didn't think that four guys would run our two, not, 210 and still not make it. So. Yeah. I mean, it's never, ever happened before. Yeah, and, and there's nothing else I could have done, you know, because mm -hmm. I look at someone like, you know, Brett Gocher was, was fifth, and... Um, you know, I, I probably, you know, I could have not gone with it and maybe ran slower, but I probably it wouldn't have made any difference. You know, I had to go for it and try it, and um, and I never really gave, you know, I never gave up or anything. I was just trying to, you know, I always kept myself going that, you know, someone can, because that's the thing about the marathon, someone can come back, you know, um, quite a bit in the end, and and I was able to to kind of pick back up uh, at the end, and you know, it just wasn't enough, you know, and, and Abdi and Ryan and Meb just ran so strong, so. Um, that you last know. mile, did you pick it up a bit? Or? Yeah, you know, I, I, so I, I started getting the spasming and around seven when we were coming back in. So I think that was about 17 miles, and and they kind of gapped me a little bit, and I, I kind of made it back up, but then it, they it started again, and I, I had to back off to five ten a mile, and that's pretty much what I ran for, um, probably from. 18 to 23 or so, 20, uh, maybe, I don't, I don't know exact splits. I was checking my watch, that was pretty even, um, just, just to make sure I was still managing. You know, sometimes when you're, when, when you slow down like that, you can't really tell. I don't know, I was like, oh, I hope not run six minute miles all of a sudden, but 
then the second to last mile, I ran 504 because my agent was out there yelling at me. I'd be cracked in the, out of the top three, and so that was what I was keeping myself going with, you know, that someone can, can crack and come back. And I did see him coming back, and I don't know. I probably ran under five minutes the last mile, but um, maybe not a lot. But, uh, you know, I, I definitely picked it up the last two. But I had, you know, that's why, you know, being able to slow it down for those uh, – four or five miles and run five tens it, it got that spasming under control that's why i know it's not a nutritional thing it's a it, you know it's it's a it's definitely a muscular thing because when you start cramping up you don't stop it you know um, by running five ten a mile still so just that little bit of difference was Thank enough to buddy. really keep it under control so um, one of the unique things about your training at least from an outsider's perspective looking in is that instead of you know tuning up with a half marathon or two you did two road k's uh, five k's in November. Yeah. Um, so can you tell me the idea behind that? Was there longer, harder efforts like a half marathon tune-up done in training? Yeah, we, um, you know, the, there was two things. The, part of it was <coughs> I didn't run for six months, so I needed, like, all the time I could have. And, and I didn't want to go to a half marathon really tired and run bad. You know, like, I needed good performances. Mm -hmm. and um, And so... I've had a lot of success at the shorter distances, and, and at that point in the training, it still hadn't done anything really long, so it wasn't like I was, I hadn't done anything short and fast either, but it was just kind of foundational type stuff, so I could pop right into a 5K, keep my training pretty high, you know, I ran 100 miles a week when I ran those 5Ks still, um, so uh, I was able to do that and get the experience of racing, because it had been a year for me, and uh, and so I, need, I needed that race, but the other part is, um, I, I think that the half marathon's good, but there's such a huge difference to the marathon too that I didn't want to have any false confidence. I think either, and so the, I did. Yeah, I mean, I ran a 62:50 half marathon in practice and some 20 miler like at five minute pace and um, you know, 15 miles at 450 pace. So I did stuff like that, you know, almost every week, but in those in those last um six weeks or so but uh i didn't want to go out there and put it out there because i probably could have gone out and ran 61 minutes i mean that's pretty i think that's kind of like my normal fitness level but i don't think that would have told me anything about the marathon either because yeah like the mar marathon is just a different animal um one of the reasons that hall said he he's been racing marathons the way he's just going from the front taking it out you know in a fast first half, it's just that's how the East Africans are racing it, you know, and it's a war of attrition. Do you agree with that in some of the, the, the races that you've observed? Do you wish you would have taken it out different? Well, I think um, probably for me, I mean, I probably would have been better if it was like 64.30. You know, I probably would have been able to run 64.30 again. I probably wouldn't have had that spasming, but you have to compete. And um, that's, I mean, that's just always what I've believed in how I do the best. I I mean, I like to get in there and and compete. Like I feel like if I'm if I'm just out there running by myself, even when I ran 12:56, my thought of competing was just hang on, just hang on, just hang on. And it may have seemed more conservative, but it was still compete with who else is around you and don't think about the clock. And so um, I wouldn't have felt comfortable going out and running 64:30 uh, for the first half by myself. I, and it, I don't think it would have made any difference. I mean, maybe I would have came back and picked up a spot, but would it, that wouldn't have meant a whole lot either. I mean, I would have uh, skirted the competition, so to speak, and just kind of, you know, made it on. You know, I, I, I want to be competitive, and I don't want to be just, you know, just make it there. And so, um, yeah, that's part of the reason that, you know, I don't think that it was a good thing that I didn't make the team, but it's going to make me focus on track and you know, I've been competitive before in that, and so that's what I'm going to just focus on, just be competitive. So You mentioned the 1256, and maybe we should talk about the future, but first kind of going back to that and kind of your time since you switched over to Alberta. Yeah. I assume the thinking was, like, for the marathon, the focus would be the marathon, and you've had a tremendous success on the track, and you have run two marathon PRs, but yeah, it seems like both after both those, you've been a bit frustrated. So yeah. how do you kind of... And you've had some of the same injury problems. So how do you kind of put the last well, four years in perspective? Yeah, you know, last night we were talking a little bit about if I had ran 12.56 and been sixth at the World Championships and the 10K and stuff like that, 
when I was, you know, back in like 2005, 2006, would I have gone to the marathon at that point? Probably not. You know, we kind of went that direction because we thought that's where I had to go. And it was a different world than the world of the marathon back then. I mean, you could run, this, like what I ran yesterday, that would have been really competitive in any um, major marathon, you know, back five years ago. And it's just, it's a different world now. And so um, I probably would have taken a little different path back then, you know, if, if, if I had ran 1256 and back in 2006 instead of 2009 but um, you know that's that's the way that it is and and I look back and at it now and I I've been a little uh, frustrated with the with the results but it's been a it's been two years of, of kind of finding things out a little bit and uh, yeah I mean I, there's no lie I've had a lot of injuries and and so I've trained as healthy as possible, and we identified a lot of things. That's what, you know, I, I do work with a PT now that, that does our whole strength program. Before, we were kind of doing what the general program is that was given to us by, um, by different strength coaches, and um, I had a lot of underlying issues. Um, <coughs> I have a lot of confidence in the guy that we use now because, I mean, my body just feels good again. And uh, the last two years, I didn't feel good. Like, my body felt banged up. I was always dancing around little little problems and and I'm, I'm trying to be a lot more proactive on it now um, trying to, you know we were always trying to chase a reason for an injury you know and we did find some problems but there was other problems that we we were looking at you know like real obvious things instead of uh, built up injury patterns and stuff like that and so um, and so I, I've I got a lot more confidence in where I'm going in the future now and and yeah, I mean, I, like this is the this is the healthiest I've felt in, since 2009. One of the big stories before the 2010 New York City Marathon was um, the tweaking of your form. And I think when as I observed you running in the lead pack, it didn't look like you know there was like that's been as much of an emphasis anymore. You know, specifically with like the angles of your thumbs being down. And yeah, I mean, that, that was rumored. Can you tell me about how that's evolved since New York in 2010? Yeah, I mean, that was very public. We still we don't try to think of it like see the, the biggest I think I did get her trying to change my form there's no doubt about it um, now though we emphasize instead of trying to change our form it's just what happens is gonna happen from the strength work that we've been doing and uh, I feel I, I, I mean I think my forms a lot closer to to where we had wanted it to get but we haven't we haven't tried to do it at all I mean it's it's been whatever we've done in with the exercises in the in the weight room, that's what's led to it. Um, whereas before in 2010, we were trying to make it happen. I mean, Alberta was yelling at me on the you know uh, things about to change what I'm doing. You know, consciously think of you know doing this or whatever. And so now we do those things, and I don't think about it. And if it happens, it happens. And it's it's just a lot more long-term approach. And you know, I think you know we knew where we wanted to get to with the form. We just didn't know how to get there. And so I don't. Now we're just trying to get wherever it's taking, wherever my body's telling me to go. And so um, I feel good though. I mean, I feel I feel like my form is very good and, and efficient. And um, I think that we've done a good job now. It's just staying strong. That's the biggest thing. You know, I gotta keep my, keep my body able to do it, you know, and uh, it'll happen over time to where it just becomes natural. And kind of the, you mentioned the the future a bit to the track season. Have you thought, thought of that at all? I mean, you yeah. have run well both five. I mean, probably run better five than ten now. So, yeah. Um, you know, I'm. I just want to compete. Uh, I'm. I'm just thankful to be racing again and running. I mean, it's. It was. It was a long time without being able to do it, and so. Um, you know, like my. Yeah, I've ran faster at five k, but I think I was probably still better at the ten k. I mean. Uh, I don't have I, I might not have that blistering kick in the 5k which is often very <coughs> tactical um, but uh, I know I've ran I think actually when I ran in the half marathon it's probably as good as I ran in the 5k because uh, yeah I mean it was it was a competitive race same thing with the 10k you know I, it was only 27 22 as compared to 1256 um, when I when I ran that in the world championships in Berlin but that was the world championships I mean you run it in a different you know it's a very tactical race and um, it's very much faster in the second half, and it was warm. It was 78 degrees yeah, or something like that. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think I could be the most competitive in the 10K 
you know, unfortunately there's not like a half marathon uh, in the Olympics because that would probably be my, my best event. But, you know, when we were saying yesterday, you know, the reactionary thing of no, not doing the marathon and stuff, that's not really, you know, looking back at it, I don't think that's really the plan anymore. I think it's, well, I'll still do the marathon for sure, of course, but we've avoided doing the things that I've had a lot of success at that I've been good at in, in pursuit of the marathon. So, uh, you know, like I, I think that if I would have ran the New York City Marathon after I was third in the World Half Marathon Championships, I probably would have been really good. But, you know, so I, I think I would like to, to pursue my other, the other goals of things that I've been good at. And then, you know, maybe you do the marathon in the fall, you know, like at the end of it. But you don't emphasize the whole year because I've gotten the cycle where I, I try to focus on it and then um, every, at the expense of everything else. And so maybe try to do the things that I'm really good at and try to, hey, what, what's, why not try doing the marathon? Everything's going really good. And, I, and I've got a lot of, you know, I've got the nutritional part down from Gatorade and stuff now. And, and I think that I just got to stay healthy, and that's part of it, you know, like doing those races, doing, I'd like to do, I'd love to do cross country again, you know. Like, uh, I, unfortunately, they went every other year, you know, to World Cross Country Championships, but that's something I'd really love to do, you know. I, I'm good at that stuff, and I, 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 it's, it's always fun when you're doing good. And so I'd love to do that. And then, yeah, I mean, I'll, hey, in two years I might be, have been healthy for a few years and be rocking it out and go back to the marathon full time. But I'm just not going to focus so solely on it. I'm going to compete and do well and not just be like, i got to do this in the marathon. And just from what I've heard you say, was that turning point this race then? Yeah, maybe. Um, I've been so focused on it. You know, that's the hard thing. Uh, you know, the mar- or the Olympics is, is everything. It's every four years, and you don't have the luxury of time when it's sneaking up, and you just get so focused on it that you don't enjoy the racing and the training. And I'm and being thankful for actually having the opportunity to do it because, like this past year, you know, I was I didn't have that opportunity. You know, like I was sitting on the couch for I didn't run for six months at all, and uh, and so I missed the racing and stuff. But as soon as I started again, it was like hey, you only. You can you can make the Olympic team in the, in the marathon. It's not that much time, and, and so you, I went to focus right on it again. And I, I gotta enjoy actually the process of being out there and racing again. <coughs> I guess kind of a question just for the average runner out there. I mean, you got you know all the these technical stuff at your disposal and everything, and then you work with a Gatorade scientist, and you know you still get hurt. And I think that's part of the problem every runner goes goes through so kind of what message do you have for them they might say well if Dathan st- still gets hurt you know, if well he still cramps yeah. what can I do or yeah you know they be discouraged or encouraged or what the, the, the fact of the matter is that I pushed the envelope um, because I want to be really good uh, I could probably back off a little bit but um, but if I hit it out of the park um, doing 100 percent you know that's I'm going to do that, you know, and uh, so, you know, sometimes the emphasis sometimes will be so much on the, the hydro works and, and the um, alter G and stuff like that, but I mean, the bottom line is I train really hard, and I do that stuff on top of the training, and so um, what I can do with Gatorade, um, yeah, not everybody has that at their disposal, but I do that on top of the stuff that I'm already doing, and so... It's not that everything that it's more is you know more is better, but um, but I'm gonna push the envelope and I'm gonna you know I gotta be smart obviously and I've had trouble with that, um, but you know you know Alberto's that way a little bit too. I mean he was an aggressive racer and that's how he is as a coach and we're gonna try to be the best we can be and if there's a lot of bumps along the road I mean I've come back from everything that's happened and I'll keep coming back. Um, so a lot of a lot of people might not. Um, might not come back from those kind of things, but you look at a guy like Meb, you know, and stuff. It's an inspirational story to just stick to it, work as hard as you can, you know. And um, so I think that's something that ev- everybody can can appreciate. As long as you love to do it and you want to do it, um, you can come back from anything, you know. A lot of everybody gets hurt, um, but it's it's a matter of how much do you. Everybody says how much do you want it, but I think it's how much do you love it. You know, I love to train and I love to race, and I think if anybody who's out there who has those problems, if you love to train and you love to race, you'll you'll, you'll find a way to get back out there. Um, let me ask you one more thing, going back to what you said before. Um, 
sometimes like having success in an event makes you sort of fall in love with it. <coughs> have you ever loved the marathon, or have you just been interested in it because you thought your that was where your most potential would be? Yeah, you know, I I, I do love the marathon, but I think I love being good better, <laughs> and so. Um, you know, so uh, if it's being good in the marathon or if it's being good at 5K, I want to I succeed at what I'm going to be best at. And so if that means that i got to spend a year or two really focusing on the track and um, figuring out things a little bit in the marathon, that's okay. Um, if it means that in two years I'm back full-time in the marathon and, and um, 100%, I just want to be good. And so... Whatever I'm going to be the best at, that's what I, you know, sometimes you do, yeah. I mean, the, the marathon has this glam, this, uh, you know, it's the pinnacle event and, of the Olympic Games and, and uh, the New York City Marathon. I'm, you know, I love that kind of stuff, um, and I still want that, but I want to make sure I'm on track first to be as good as I can. Because I think if I focus on that now, whatever, right to me, that right now, that's the t- i got to look at the 10K half marathon, 5K, that realm of things that leads me back to being great in the marathon that's 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 great I guess two real quick questions and when you ran the one hour half that year why didn't you do a marathon that, that I wanted to we talked about it when we were walking back afterwards uh, we said well we should just keep going for three more weeks um, but you know we had said we're not doing a marathon for a year and I, I trust Alberto completely and he said I, I really want you to come back and focus for a year on the track, and and I, I still trust him 100%. We've had mixed results, but I really believe, you know, that he is he is a very smart, but very passionate guy more than anything. I mean, he knows exact. He will he will find the way, and he'll he would never give up on me. That's what you know. Even in the worst of times, he's not going to give up. He'll find a way to fix it. I mean running with the wound vac for two months. I mean, who would have thought of that? And it's never been done, I'm sure. I mean, I was, the bags, bags were ripping out of, you know, it was ripping out of the bag, and um, I'm sure that that has never been done. No one has ever ran 100 miles with a week with a wound vac on. And so um, that's what made him a great athlete is that he's relentless, and that's what, it'll make, that's what makes him a great coach. And he's not afraid to admit when, he was, when he's wrong. I mean, he's, there's been many times when we've screwed up. But that's part of what makes me trust him, that, you know, we're, we'll find the way. And there's going to be bumps along the road, but we'll find the way. How close was Dathan to running this? Was it's Galen? I mean, sorry. Uh, oh, I'm really, I'm tired. Yeah, well, it, wasn't, it wasn't some ploy. I mean, they, they were keeping their options open, you know, and he was, I, he just, you know, he wasn't, he was training good, but uh, I don't think, they, they, at some point, there was a decision that had to be made. Which direction do we go? And I mean, he's he ran 26:48 last year, and he's consistently gotten better at each year. And so I think it was for him. It was like, do we change something all of a sudden right now, or do I and go to this the marathon, do this long thing? Do we take this big risk, or do we know it's been working in the past and keep chipping away at it? And uh, so that's what they decided. Let's all right. Let's let's keep doing what we've been doing and. You know he's progressively gotten there. If he keep, if he progresses again this year as much as he's re- progressed each other year, he's going to be in the hunt for a medal in the 10K. And so, uh, you know that's what that was the, the choice. Uh, what do you miss most about living in Michigan? Oh, Michigan! I love Michigan. Um, you go back for the holidays this year? We didn't this year. We were in Albuquerque. Okay. Yeah, and it was like the one year that we could have gone back. It's they haven't had hardly any snow until now, but. Um, you know, I, I would love to uh, move back there someday, you know, but I want to be involved in the sport. I want to, and I want to be, basically, I want to do like what Alberto's doing, you know. And if that opportunity was there in Michigan, I would, I would do that, you know. And I would, man, my family would love to go. But, uh, but I love having that there at Nike right now, too. And that works good for me right now, so. You rich Nike project? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Alberto's getting old anyway. 